this is Marilyn Price greeting you from my home office studio, whatever the room is, and hopefully you're comfy and getting ready to tell one of, I said this every time, but it's always true. I only tell stories that I really like. Number one, they're easier to remember. And because when you have a story you like, you tell it better and it resonates with you. But this one in particular is an old, old tale. And it's written about a spider, which you can make with your hands. So uh, let's try that first. A spider has eight legs. And a uh, spider doesn't have thumbs. But if you put your thumbs together, you have the easiest spider, which for those of you um, formerly of the preschool set, or even the mama and the papa, that was the way we sang the itsy bitsy spider. So we're gonna get rid of our spider for now. Give him some applause, get him off set. This particular story is about the king of the spiders and his name is Anansi. So it is an African folk tale. There are many Anansi stories, but the reason I like this one is because it has a couple of things to do with us. So, and it answers questions. So if you have ever loved questions like me, then um, there was a way long, long, long ago that stories were built around questions. So for example, if someone said to you, hey, Marilyn, that would be me. So I'll take the part of me. Why did this happen? Or how did that happen? Or who did that? Rather than just say the answer, they would envelop it, love envelopes, right, into a story. And this is one of those stories. We're going to tell it using a variety of media, all kind of puppets, but puppets, and this time we're going to use a little bit of masks, because it's particularly in the African culture, masks were very important. Uh, lots of reasons, again, a good story. But we're gonna use masks, we're gonna use puppets, and we're gonna show you that we would be me, that how to make one of these characters and then add a little bit of extra just for you. And the other thing this does is the names of the characters describe what they do. And that, if you remember, is not unusual in fairy tales, folk tales. For example, there was a girl who wore a red hood, and her name was, got it, Little Red Riding Hood. Awesome. And she, her job in the story was to help out grandma, something that we in the grandma world really like. So her name was Red Riding Hood because she wore a red riding hood. Another story you might be familiar with was Cinderella. Cinderella was called Cinderella because she swept out the ashes, the cinders in the fireplace in the midst of this story that leads her to a whole different kind of life. So that's the examples of names. And uh, so where I think we should start with this story of Anansi the spider. The first character I made, I made oddly enough out of something called the fork. Now, I like to make kings, I'm gonna bring him pretty close. He's kind of a clunky fork, because on the bottom of the fork, they have a spoon, which is for eating, obviously, and holding. But for our purposes, forks make great kings. Now, if I have not mentioned to you that Anunsi is the king of the spiders, I apologize, because I meant to. So not only does Anunsi have a crown, but if you take four of these, and add four more, you have eight legs. So this is what I did. I took one fork, I painted it as good as I could to gold, but I didn't have gold, so I used yellow. And then I took two other forks and I attached them and I hold this character like that. And that is the king of the spiders, the king. Anansi, the spider king. Eight legs make him a spider, all you science gurus, and the crown, oh, for all you regal people, make him the king. So he comes into our story very briefly. So I'm gonna put him aside. He's gonna crawl up, 
crawl over and out of our space. I'm going to put him here. Now, besides having eight legs, because this is a number story, Anansi had six sons. You could do this story with your fingers if you want, except it's way a lot more fun to do it with his six sons. So allow me to introduce them. Remember I said, and if you didn't, I'm here to remind you, the story goes in order. And the order is the son's names. So if number one son is the beginning of our story and number two follows us along. So here goes number one son. Oh yeah, big important thing. Each of them has a specialty, just like us, right? I'm a puppeteer. You all do something special. Everyone has something they do special. But this sons of Anansi the spider are created with masks. Now I have some very fancy masks and I would love to share those with you. But fancy masks for today's project, you could do them on your own, of course might take a little time. So I am going to take the material that I love, which is called paper plates. Today I'm gonna to use little ones. I've used bigger ones before. And I'm gonna take a scissors. And the first thing I'm gonna do is fold that plate over. The cheaper the plate, the better. But we don't draw too much. Yeah, we do draw them. First thing we're gonna do is to make a way for our puppets to breathe. Uh, or our masks too, that's important. And then we're going to climb up with our scissors with the water spout, about the fold, and push these together. Now, for those of you who like masks, you can use these. Bigger plates work better. But for our Anansi characters, we have to make how many? Six. Staple that together. We'll maintain our nose for the spider's thumbs. Now, some people ask me, because they always want to ask questions, why, don't the, why doesn't our spider and king have spider sons? Well, he might, so you could hold them like that. Okay, cool. Now, this is what I want you to think about. Six sons. I'm going to hold up their names and think with me how you would characterize, in today's app world, they're called icons, each of these spiders with an icon that immediately would identify them. So, if you had number one son who is called C Trouble, I'm gonna put this up here, maybe you can take a screenshot of it later. What might you put there? And if you have a son named Road Builder, what would you put there? And if you had a son named River Drinker, what would you put there? And if, you had a son named Game Skinner. That one I'll explain later. What would you put there? And what about Spear Thrower and Cushion? Those are the six sons of a Nancy. Got it? So we're going to start with number one son. And you and I can figure this out. This, oops, they, fell. they fell. Where'd he go? Whoops. We like to put them in order, and then, of course, I lost. There he is. This one, and I always give myself a cue, clue in the back. I, I like to tell the truth here. I call this one Sea Trouble. So if your name was Sea Trouble, you could draw the most incredible eyes all over it. And I think, because I've worn them since I was eight, a pair of glasses, which make you Sea Trouble better. Sea Trouble. What does that mean? Sea Trouble can see so far away. He has the superpower, yep, yeah, to see if anything is happening, which means he could also see good things too. But that is Sea Trouble number one. And then you can draw eyeballs on it, but I'm not going to take up your time by drawing, even though I love to draw. So you can do that whatever you want. I am also going to show you the ones that I did for our fancy story. And here he is, Sea Trouble. Note the enormous eye. And I am going to keep him down here. Sea Trouble. Number two son is, if you recall, Road Builder. 
So I'm going to take out my little one. I'm only going to use black and white so you can see it better. What do you need to build a road? Well, story takes place in a forest. So he needs things that are going to just get rid of all the brush. But because we mostly do not live in a forest, and we build roads with things like bricks and mortar, I have put, oh, it kind of looks like a Band-Aid, but you will forgive me. I'm drawing backwards. Whoops. See, road builder. Got it? Road builder. We will always know that this is road builder. So in the sequence of our story, the next one to come up is our good friend, River Drinker. You thirsty? Have a drink. Okay. River Drinker does this. He has the ability, which would be very handy in case of a flood, to drink all the water in a river. So I think the easiest thing to do, and you will, of course, do whatever you want. You might even make a drop of water for tear over here. River drinker. Suck up all the water. So you might do a motion like this. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay. And I'll show you the fancy ones in a minute. Game Skinner. That's a little complicated. and This is why. Game Skinner needs to take the skin so you could cook something for those of you who have ever had fish and you take it off first. So that would actually be called a, a fish skinner, but for now we're gonna call it a game skinner. And what do you need to do that? You need something that will peel away the skin, doesn't hurt. So figure out what that might be. It could be a knife. So you could put a knife there, being very careful not to hurt the edges. Game Skinner. And then we have this one, Spear Thrower. And you're going to understand how these happen in our story. So Spear Thrower throws a spear. And that's, that's, you know, so what do we draw? We draw a spear. Those of you who have never met a spear, because we don't use them very much, could look like an arrow. So remember, these are the sons of a nun's. So they're princes. And the last one, my personal favorite, is cushion. So let's see, do I have a cushion here? I have a cushion right here. That's a cushion. I could use the cushion for a pillow if I got lazy and didn't want to make a puppet. But, and that wouldn't really be lazy. That would be kind of a cool thing to do. I made for cushion a big one, a really big two-plated puppet. So this is cushion. Cushion doesn't really need anything because he's cushion. And he looks kind of soft. But if you want to maybe put a feather on him or something, so that you'll remember, unless you remember to put the name on the back. There's cushion. I gave him a feather. Cool, huh? All right. So let me show you the ones I made. Talk to you just a little bit more. And then we're going to tell this story. All you need to tell it is you. So, for example, you also maybe have these things. Some of you don't have them around right now because maybe they're littler because you have the privilege of popsicles. They make great puppets, too. You can just write the names of our characters on here. I, rather than go to all that work for you, I'm just going to put a number on one. And then on the back of it, to help me remember, excuse me, I'm not going to put a number. I'm going to put a face. Simplest puppet ever. And then I will put the number one. Not that he's the most important son. He just starts the story. And so those are easy to, enough to do if you have sticks around. All kinds of sticks work. But I, sorry. Remember a long ago, maybe, oh, 15 minutes, I said that stories answer questions. Those are who stories or what did stories or how did. So this is one of my favorite puppets. And for those of you lying at home, this is how to make the final scene in our story. So being really careful not to hurt you, you take that, you pinch it, and you keep on going until you have a really nice slot. And then you see if it works. Does it work? Good morning.
cool puppet, right? Hi. Then, of course, because he needs more, he needs to see you. Puppets are great to be heard, but they also need to see you. We're going to stick a hole right in here. Again, being very careful not to stick the most important one in the room. That would be you. Now, you may not have these. Buttons work fine. But if you send me a chat note later, I will figure out how to get those to you. So here's our character, the finale of the story. Are you ready? Yep. And I'm going to give away the end because I want you to know where we're going with this story. This is a question that was answered a long time ago about something quite mysterious. So if you got up in the morning and said, oh, I got up this morning and thank goodness the sun is shining. And then you might say to your mama or your papa, or however old you are, you might say, how did the sun get up there? Science had not yet been developed in such a way that we know that the sun isn't up there, but we're circling, and it is circling us. A beautiful thing. But for then, excuse me, how did you get up there? Well, let me tell you a story. And so we are. I am going to use the puppets, the masks that I created from the tradition, and I'm inviting you to tell it with me. Let's get ourselves all ready. You can use your fingers to make Anunsi the spider. You can use the puppet from the forks and you can use your imagination and you can just listen to this wonderful story about Anunsi and his six sons. So, shall we start? Once upon a time, there was the king of the spiders, and his name was Anansi. Anansi was revered by all the people in the kingdom that lived with him. He was a very kind king, and he always took care of all the people. And in order to do that, Anansi would often take a walk all over the kingdom, and he would greet the people and find out if there was anything they needed. Well, one day, when it was particularly gloomy, Anunzi was walking along. He didn't see where he was going. And Anunzi slipped and fell into the bottom of a river. And he was missing for three days. Now, meanwhile, back at the castle, Anunzi's six sons were very worried because they hadn't seen their father in three days. So they got to and said, we need to find father. So the first one up to look was the one who could see trouble. So see trouble, number one son, looked everywhere. He looked to the right and he looked to the left. And far away, three days away, he saw father. And he reported to his brothers, father, father is in trouble. I see father. He's at the bottom of a river. We must go find him. And so they set off to find father. Now, in who, there was trouble. They could not see all the way through to the river because the river was not yet developed. So road builder took the place of see trouble and began to build a road. First he had to clear away all the brush. He made his way through the forest. He set things aside to make way for the six sons of Anansi, but now he was in the lead and off he went until he got to the river. At the bottom of the river sat Anansi, or so they thought, but they couldn't see him, and the only way to get to him was to drink to the river. Who could do that? Not see trouble, not road builder, but of course none other than river drinker, who asked his brother to step aside, and so he did. And with one big breath, he 
got to the bottom of the river where scampered down the six sons of Anansi. And at the bottom of the river was Father, Father, the king of the spider, except for one problem. Father had been swallowed by a big fish. Oh, no. They knew Father was in there because they could hear him talking. And they called out to him, Don't worry, Father. We will get you. Now, Sea Trouble had found him. Yes. Road Builder had got them there. Yes. And, of course, River Drinker had drunk all the water and got to the bottom of the river where sat inside a fish. King of the Anansi. So, who would be best served to save the day? Uh huh, you got it. It was none other than Game Skinner who came out and said, I will save father. And so he did. He took out the sharpest instrument he could handle and he took away the skin that was surrounding father, and out came the king. <sighs> Saved at last by none other than Game Skinner. Of course, at this point, you would think that it was the end and we could live happily ever after. But not so. For along came a bird, flying faster and faster than even any of the six cones could see. And he picked up Anunzi the spider and flew off with him. So he would not be up high into the sky. None of the sons could reach him. They were not gifted in that way, except for one who had a very, very clever way to do that. It was, of course, game th spear thrower. Spear thrower took the spear, threw it up into the air, and hit the bird, not killing him, but startling him enough to allow Anansi to fall towards the ground. Oh, no! Father, father, the Ross sons rushed out to save him, but who could do the best job of all? Oh, yes. It was Cushion, soft and welcoming, who fell down onto the ground and saved father. Yay! The king of the spider was saved by all of his sons, and he was grateful. That night, after a royal feast, the king of the spiders went for a walk carefully in the woods. As he was walking along, trying to figure out who, who, and how he could help and gift his sons for saving his life, he came upon something he had never seen before. It was a beautiful, shiny, golden orb sitting in the middle of the forest. When Anansi came to that beautiful, it was very warm, he said, what a beautiful gift I could give to my son who saved me. Well, he said, I would like to give this to the son who saved me. And they all shouted at once, me, I did. Number one son who said, of course I did it because without me, we wouldn't have been able to find you. And number two, son, oh, I built the road. And number three, son, said, I drank the water. Number four, son, said, wait, wait, wait. I skinned the fish. And number five, son, said, I threw the spear that got the bird to drop you, father. We all did it. And they argued and they argued and they argued and nobody could figure out who was the most important son. And so the king did this. He took that golden orb and said, enough, enough. We will all use this treasure. And he threw as far as he could that sun into the sky. So when we wake up in the morning, when we look up at the sky, when we see that sun shining through, keeping us warm, that's how it got there. Sure as my name is Marilyn, and their names all say what they do. Anunsi was the king of the spiders, the sun we hope, we circle, we see, we bathe under, we reflect its light, shall live with us happily ever after. That's 
the end. Before we leave, I'd just like to uh, once again show you a couple of ways to use those plates that we folded and stapled. We gave them names, we decorated them. We are, of course, lucky to have them. The plates that I made to use in storytelling are a little bit fancier. And for tell you the truth, just like Anansi, I don't have a special one because we all work together to rescue the king, just like we're all working together, cooperating and telling stories. Another things you can do with all those plates you have left over, you can make a hanger for some of your objects just to keep around and handy. I found this particular plate because my little boy at three at nursery school, preschool, made me this for Mother's Day. On it, it said, I love you, Mama. He could have said, I love you, the king of the spiders. And from that, using our imagination, we can create stories. We can tell things. We can answer questions. And we can live happily ever after. And that's, that's the end. Should you choose to join us next week, this video will be up, I know, with my good friend Debbie. By tomorrow, I'm going to tell you an original story told with kitchen equipment called Grandma's Cookies. So uh, if you have a few crumbs laying around left over from your cookies, bring them on. And thank you for coming. The end.